This week, we're going to continue our series on relationships. We've been going through that series through the month. Uh, we opened with an awesome uh, message about overcoming the fears of being known. And that's uh, one of the big hindrances in, in building relationships is, hey, sometimes, it's, sometimes I just don't really want you to know who I really am. And, and we can't have truly strong relationships if we are hidden and we have a fear of being known. And so once we overcome that fear, it enables us to have strong relationships with one another. Uh, then marriage was the second um, series, the message of the series, talking about how, hey, it's not just this sub, um, subordinate, authoritative relationship, but it's actually a relationship of love, that we can serve one another, equally submitting to one another, so that we can show the, the who God was, that God was God and himself is love. Yep. Last week we were talking about authority and how sometimes it's a difficult relationship to um, <clears throat> roll out. And especially when the Bible brings those verses at us and saying, like, well, all authority is from God. And that's like, oh, what if my authority is bad? And, you know, how do I deal with that? And so last week was a really um, great time to just think about, hey, the, the, every authority that we have in our life, we should treat them, as Paul says, we treat them like they're the Lord. And so to serve them and to love them. And then those moments that sometimes, hey, they're, they're asked of us something hard or something wrong, then how do we appeal to them in a way that will bring about a godly ending? So you can look at those, all of those, the series from this month is all on our website or on our YouTube channel. So if you miss one of the Sundays this month, go ahead and check those out. And today I wanted to focus on, or we wanted to focus on, um, relationships in the body of Christ. I thought, we need each other. Right? And I, I think that to be the, the focus of the message that uh, I said in my notes today. God didn't create any Lone Ranger Christians. We weren't meant to do this alone. Uh, you know, sometimes a Lone Ranger is maybe a reference to old Western movies, you know, when they had the, the cowboy and he would ride off after he did, this, did his thing and he, he, created, he uh, conquered whatever he was conquering, and then he would ride off into the sunset, you know, all alone. And was, in, in the body of Christ, there's no lone ranger. There's no lone Christian. We are meant to be a body, to be together. So this morning, as we um, enter into the Word, uh, let's pray and ask God to bless it and that we may hear what He wants to say this morning. Father, we are so grateful to be here together. I thank you that we are family, that we are one. I pray that to end today's message, God, that we would be encouraged to be one, to be uh, to that we need each other, that we're there for each other, that we're better together. Father, I thank you for that. And I ask that each one today would receive from you all that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's turn to John chapter 13 today. John chapter 13, we're going to be looking at verse 34 and 35. John chapter 13. Verse 34 and 35. One of the overall um, the overarching theme this month was that relationships allow us to show the love of the Father. So in everything that we do, in all of our relationships, we know that we've been created in the image of God. We've been created in His very character. We have the ability in ourselves to show others who God is. We share the characters of God. And so and one of the most important things is love. That God would look at Adam and Eve and said, and looked at Adam and said, hey, it's not good that you be alone. And again, we've mentioned this probably a few times, but it wasn't that he was just saying, hey, Adam, it's not good that you be alone because you probably run around with a stick in your hand and poke out your eye. You know, that wasn't what he was saying. Because it wasn't good that you be alone because it, alone you cannot have a relationship. You cannot be, you cannot be loved. You cannot fully um, share the image of God with others. The image of God is that he is love. And so he said, hey, I, I need a helper. I need, there needs to be a relationship. There needs to be an Eve relationship so that you guys can share what love is, that you would be mutually submitted to one another, sharing love. So this morning, again, we look at John chapter 14, and Jesus gives us, again, this picture of what is it, what is it going to look like as the body, if, it, if the church is one, if, or the relationships that we have in the church, what should it look like? How is it going to benefit the world? And he says this in verse 34 and 35, he says, a new command I give you, Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So again, this super important aspect of why do we have 
relationship? Why in the body of Christ do we need each other? Because when the, when the world sees, when we see how we love one another, then they're going to see Jesus. They're going to know Jesus because of how we interact with one another, how we love each other, how we need each other, how we lean upon each other. Lean upon each other's strengths and each other's weaknesses, how we care for one another when we're in need, how we rejoice together. This is how the love is. And, and I love this, this, defining this word, love. Because sometimes I think in different contexts and different areas, sometimes we get a maybe misperception of this. But, but loving each other the way Jesus did is to think about the others, uh, sorry, so the love is thinking about the other's best at my expense. I want to, isn't that the way Jesus loved each one of those we're singing about this morning? That he loved, he was thinking about our best, each one of our best at his expense. And that's the way we love one another. That, and, and I think that's why when Jesus said, they will know that you're my disciples, so they'll know me when you love one another because it's going to, we're going to live in such a way that we're going to be thinking about the other's best at my expense. I want to serve you no matter what it may cost you. We know that, that when we're talking about marriages, that it extremely benefits and strengthens a marriage when you're thinking about, hey, how can I serve the other? How can I lift them up? And in the body of Christ, when we're thinking about here on Sunday morning when we gather, or if we're gathering in our homes, or wherever we're in relationship with one another, when we're serving each other, that we think about, hey, that other person's best at, at my expense. That's, that's, a, that's an expression of love. That's exactly what the love of the Father is like. And when people around us see this, hear that scream from all the kids, <laughs> and that means they're having fun, that's really good. So um, they, they were thinking about um, the other's best at my expense, that's, and that's an attitude, that's a position that Christ had with the church. So let's, uh, let's look at um, 1 Corinthians here for a second. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Continuing on this idea that there's no lone rangers in the body of Christ. That we, we all need each other. And I was thinking even about the body and how each, they got to intricate detail and in putting all of the body together. And if it wasn't ordered the way that he ordered it, that that, that we, we would cease to be able to have life. And I was like, wow, this is really good. And Paul, Paul begins to examine this a little bit more and talk about the unity of the body, the body of Christ, that we are one together. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, we're going to read this this morning, and I believe we're going to begin to receive some insights about, hey, how do we all work together? What is this love a relationship that we have one another with the body? So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reads this way, verse, starting verse 12. Just as the body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were baptized into one spirit as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If there were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you, and on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body, 
but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffered, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. I love this picture of the, of the body. Um, you know, me having a broken body is kind of interesting talking about uh, having, having how one suffers and they all suffer. It's been really crazy doing just t basic tasks around the office or you know, typing things or even around the house. Like, every once in a while I'm tying my shoes and Rachel can tell I'm getting frustrated with the amount of pain I'm having and she'll like offer to do things for me and then I'm like, oh no, I don't want to, I don't, I don't need help and I've been learning a lot about humility and things of that nature through this whole process too. Um, but it, it's, it's this aspect of the body, we need one another. I thought it would be a great exercise. I know maybe sometimes we're not used to talking in church to each other. But if we could just take a moment, turn to the person to your right, and say, hey, I need you. We can do that together, ready? I need you. And then we can look to the person on the other side of the room and say, hey, we need each other. We need each other, right? I mean, this, this is what Paul is saying to me. We need each other. It's really hard when um, there's been moments, maybe if you've experienced this, where, hey, you know, well, that person, you know, he's always doing this, and I really want to do that, and, and hey, I wish I could be this, this specialty or that specialty. And it, nobody, I don't know, nobody deals with this, with this at all. But, you know, there was a, there was a moment even, I, I prompted Rachel ahead of time, so I said I don't owe, owe her money today for using her name. But, uh, you know, there was a time, Rachel, when we were going through some things, and she was like, Andrew, you know, you always get to go, and you get to speak, and you get to share, you're, you're always up front, and, and for a while it, it caused a little, you know, contingency, and it was like, oh, I'm, you know, I, I really want to be the one up front talking and, and, and doing things. And, and then after a while she said, you know what, actually I don't, like, that's not who I am. Like, actually, I love to serve. And she's like, man, when I'm back there in the nursery, she's like, I feel great about it. I'm, I'm taking care of the kids, and hey, I love it when I can come in. Every once in a while she comes into the office on Wednesdays and she'll do some little thing behind the scenes. Like she's like, you know, if, if I'm honest with them, I actually really enjoy who God has created me to be. And, and what we've learned in our, in our marriage and in our life is that, hey, when, when each of us are operating in our strength, it actually makes things work together really well. Amen. And the body of Christ is the same aspect. When we work together, the strengths and the giftings that God has put in each one of us body, the, the church, the body of Christ, we work together really well. It makes the it makes those around us see us in a really awesome light that, wow, that's what God looks like. When people are working together, there's no backbiting, there's no judgment, right? There, there's this unity that happens when each of us is able to do the part that God has created us to be. Saying one of the one of the hardest things that I was noticing this, you know, uh, when I was reading through here, that each one of these different body parts was saying to the other, "Hey, what if you know? I don't. I, what if we don't need? We don't need that part. Or hey, if I, I could be, I could be that part. It would be better for me." And I was noticing there's one one thing. If there's there's anything that breaks love or or breaks relationship or breaks unity in the body, I think it was it's this idea that of judgment. It's a judgment. Poison is the foundation of all relationships. Because mm -hmm. you know, when we make a judgment, there's, either, there's one of two things happening when we're making a judgment. Either one, a judgment is caused because we have pride. Oh, I'm the better part of the body. Oh, I'm the better in a relationship. I think too highly of my strength that God has given me. <laughs> or secondly, <clears throat> It, it's, it's like a false humility that happens. There's a, there's a, there's a, oh, a, even a jealousy. There's a, oh, I'm just insignificant. I only, I only play this part in who I am. Judgments poison our ability to have relationship. If everybody were the same way, it would, it would just, we would cease to be a body. We would cease to function as a community of God. We would cease to be able to love one another if we were all similar. All do the same task, right? I mean, uh, somebody uh, the other day we were talking, uh, meeting some people at the marriage retreat, and she said, "Yeah, if we were all the same, it would be really, it would be a really boring life." I said, "Yeah, it would. It would 
and we've all had the same color hair, all the same color <laughs> everything, all the same lights, all the no, but when we when there's diversity, it allows for us to build on each other's strength and we do it allows for the, the love of God to shine through in us. And that's how we come together as a body of Christ. That's why I'm excited as we talk about the greeters team and those in in, in the family here that are saying, hey, I, I love to greet people. I, I can be a I can be a smiley face and say, hey, welcome to Capital City Church. And hey, here's a nursery, and you have that hospitality, just happiness. I'm like, I'm excited that we're forming this team because if we if we give those who have those giftedness that the position to do that, then hey, that strengthens us as a body. Or hey, I love to sit behind a camera and, and press record on it. Or hey, you know what? I have really a great skill, and I can push a button up and down and make sound go louder or deeper or, or higher. Those, I mean, and, and you're like, Man, I love to just serve them. When we work together in the giftedness that we have, the body of Christ becomes stronger. And the world around us sees, man, you guys, you guys work together really well. Man, how, do you, how are you guys are so different than any team I've belonged to before? Why? Because we're, we're considering each other like Christ. We're loving each other and serving one another. We're thinking highly of each other. And we're strengthened. But not, not only in that aspect that there's things for us to accomplish in the, in the church body, but there's also ways that we need one another because we talk a lot about discipleship. That discipleship is becoming more and more like Christ. To submit to the Lordship of Jesus in every area of our life. That includes finances. It includes the way we treat each other in marriage. It includes... Um, knowing the scripture and, and receiving that it includes how we work in the workplace. Discipleship overtakes all of our life. So how is it here that that this body aspect, this relationship aspect, how do we, how does it benefit us in discipleship and becoming like Jesus? It's because, like we just said to each other, we looked across the room and said, hey, we need each other, I need you, we need you, we need each other because together we can begin to look more and more like Christ. Verse 27 and 20, uh, sorry, verse uh, 25 and 26. So that there, there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. There's this aspect of when. Uh, the relationships that we have in the body of Christ enable us to have highs together, have lows together, have unity together, have pursuits of Jesus together, grow with one another in our relationship with Christ. That we concern for another. What happens when I know that um, that Rajiv and husband and the young kids are at home and they're sick? Well, now because I'm a part of the body, because we have a relationship, yeah, I know I can pray for them that they would receive the healing, that they would be strengthened this morning. I'm going to, I'm going to concern them. How do I know? Hey, when I when I know somebody's struggling and, and there's there's sin issues in their life, and hey, I'm going to I'm going to be concerned for them. I'm going to say, hey, let me show you the word. Let me walk with you through that together. Let's let's go together. I want to go together with you because I know together we're going, to, we're going to work this out. We're going to see the Lordship of Jesus in your life. We're going to see Him manifest in your life when we go through this together. When we suffer together, others suffer. When, we're, when people are honored, we're going to rejoice with them. We're going to celebrate together. We're going to lift each other up. It's an exciting thing to belong to the body. It's an exciting thing to belong to relationships. Not a... Not an, uh, an abusive or, or scarless, but a relationship that is all about love. And, and if our relationships are all about love in the body of Christ, then we're always going to be lifting the other up. I mean, I don't know about you. I love to be in a. a, a I love our marriage, Rachel and I's marriage right now, because I mean, we're lifted, we're together, we're, we're excited, it's, it's, we're lifting each other up, we're serving one another. It's exciting, it feels good, right? It, it's a. My, this, the, cloud, the cloud, the sky is bluer on the day. I mean, like, my life goes well. What I'm thinking about, hey, we're lifting each other up. And then the body of Christ, we have that same opportunity. Hey, we're lifting each other up. We're helping each other have great days, have the joy of the Lord, receiving all that He has for us. It's the opportunity we have. Let's turn one more verse before um, we're going to go to Ecclesiastes. I love getting some wisdom and reading, reading, these, reading these wisdom books.
Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Right after the book of Proverbs, so sometimes I skip through it when I'm trying to flip to it, but Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Starting in verse 9, we're going to go through verse 12 this morning. Verse 9 says, Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. I love the fact that we had you know, Brigham and Dale, and then Pastor was kind of the uh, supervisor. But putting up the wall on, on uh, was it was it Wednesday, Thursday? And Wednesday, it would have been Wednesday. Put up the wall, it's like, I, I came in here, we had something going on at home, I came in for like five minutes, I'm like, oh, this is really good, because how many of you remember, you know, sometimes Pastor would get bad back issues, so it was like really awesome, Brigham and, and Dale being here, they're like, boom, Got the nail gun going, <laughs> two working together. It was great. It was uh, it seemed seamless to me, but I'm sure there was a little bit of pushing. You guys know that they have the, those boards, putting them all together, making sure they're like all even. Look good. But all right, so two are better than one because they have a good return. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity the one who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Got another moment here. We've got to turn to each other and remember, remember turn to each other in just a moment and say, We need each other. We need, we need each other. We need each other. Yes. It is better for us to be together. And you know, you know. Okay, I'll just get on my soapbox for a little bit, right? We can't just have these have this kind of relationship, right? So it says we're needing each other. We work together, and we're going to get better labor for it. For it, we're going to keep each other warm. We're going to we're going to lift each other up when each other falls. We're going to not be over easily overpowered. We're going to be three strands, you know, tightly wound together. We can't do this just on a Sunday morning. Amen. You know that? We've got, we got, we got an hour and a half, you know, maybe two hours when we have a you know, really long service or something. But hour and a half on a Sunday morning, we don't really, I mean, you don't form a friendship just meeting each other an hour and a half. And, and most of the time, if we're honest, we don't even talk to each other. You know, uh, we have a, okay, we have our half time. I know we do a really great job, right? Talking to each other during our during our break time, but about ten minute conversation. That's all we that's all we have on Sunday morning, right? This is why, and that's my my soapbox. Okay, this is why the missional communities and discipleship is so important in the body of Christ, because it gives us an opportunity to live life together on a regular basis. Come over for dinner. Over dinner, we open the word up a little bit. We get to know each other's lives, to know each other's weaknesses and strengths. We get to serve one another. Why is it, why is time of discipleship? I want to get into that DNA groups so important. Why because it give us opportunity? Hey, I, I meet with Dion every Wednesday. We go for lunch and we just get to chat. Hey, what is God speaking to you? What's going on in our life? We're we're challenging each other. We're praying for one another. We we, we got each other's back. This is so important that, that our relationships in the body of Christ is not just a Sunday morning thing. When, when Paul was writing this, it wasn't just a Sunday morning thing. He wasn't thinking about, you know, the fact that somebody has to come in and turn on lights, though. You know, in today's uh, church world, we, we do have to have somebody to come in and turn on lights. He wasn't just thinking about somebody that's going to be the cameraman or the creator's team or the tech team. He was thinking about, hey, we're the body of Christ together. And when we each other, throughout the week, we're honoring each other, we're, we're caring for one another, we're lifting each other up, we're rejoicing with one another, we become the body, we become the image of God in our community. So Ecclesiastes talks about relationships and they're saying, hey, you guys, if somebody falls, there's nothing to pick up. It's again, it's not just a Sunday morning aspect, of, hey, come Sunday morning and i got a prayer to you, let me know. Hey, you know what? We can call one another. I can call up Dion, I know I can call up Dion and tell him, hey, Dion, this is going on in my life. Can you pray with me? 
He's going to be right there to pray for me. He's going to come on over. He's going to, I'll meet up up on Wednesday at the Chick-fil-A. be like, hey, bro, this week has been crazy. Can you just bless me for a moment? And I know that he'll be there for me. Same thing, advice of virtue. We together need each other to have a relationship with one another. When we do have this relationship, things go better in life. The last verse here, uh, verse 12 says, um, that one may be overpowered, but two can defend themselves. I want to talk about I mean, the enemy grows around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom he may destroy. Well, hey, when there's when, when I have another brother or another sister that's, that's looking out for me and saying, hey, Andrew, I've been noticing you've been a little sacking in this area and that area. It's, it's good that there's somebody together with me watching out for my back. It helps me, it benefits me that I can grow in Jesus. We're not in this alone. We don't have to be the wild, wild west, right? Clint Eastwood, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win it all and, and do it all myself. We got each other. God made us that way. God designed us to be in relationship with one another. And the last one, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This is something we desire, the pastor shared this on, in, in January, kind of the, the vision for this year is for us to have something called DNA groups. What is DNA groups? DNA groups is, is a, a little acronym that says, and it, it means it's, it means discover, nurture, and act. We want to we wanna form, we want to we see relationships formed in our, in our body that, that discover together. So you're in the Word together, and you're discovering, hey, what is Jesus saying to me? What is Jesus doing in my life? What, how is the Word speaking and challenging me? We want relationships that, that are going to nurture each other. So you're going to, hey, when things are going wrong or things need, you need encouragement, we're going to be able to nurture each other and speak the gospel to each other. And we want, to, we want relationships that are going to prompt each other to act. So, hey, if, if Jesus is speaking this to you, then how is that going to change your life? We want to, we want to be able to ask that question to each other. Why? Why is it three? Why? And we, we always encourage, we encourage it to be three people, at least three people. Because this is, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to live out this Ecclesiastes 3, three strands when we're together, when it's me, Dion, and like Wednesday, it was me, Dion, and Corey. And when it's, when it's, when it's Pastor Angel and William or something, and you know, they, they get together and we have each other's back, we're growing together, we're, we're watching out for his back, making sure that, hey, we're, we are submitting to Jesus in every area of our life. We come together, it's, we strengthen us, and not only in our personal relationship, but then as a body of Christ, that we can all move together forward. Breaking down the enemy can. You know, our vision, if you look at um, Capital City Church on the top of our bulletin, we put this on here on purpose. Our vision is to be a, a multicultural family of servant missionaries sent to make disciples of Jesus here in Madison. We want to see Madison covered with Jesus. That every household loves Jesus, is, is submitting themselves to his lordship. And maybe right now that, that, that seems like, well, that's a huge picture, right? <laughs> but we can, we can start in this room with each other coming together, working together, practicing like Jesus said, love one another, serve one another, so that we can be strengthened. And then as we do that, the momentum moves throughout the whole city. Then I got my neighbors that, hey, they're beginning to be coming to our family our, on our Monday night mission community meeting. We, they, they get invited into our game nights, and they're experiencing, hey, Andrew, you and Rachel are different. And there's, there's something about the way that you guys meet together with Brad and Crystal and with Richard and with the others in your house, with Irene and Votong, and, and you guys are like, you guys are like loving, you guys love each other, you guys actually care for each you're meeting each other's needs. What is that about you guys? There's something different. We've had the, I won't go into the, we had a conversation with one of our neighbors recently about it. And it's like, it's exciting to see that it's exactly what they're saying. They're saying, Jesus said, the relationships that you have are going to show who I am to others. That's exactly what we're seeing. That's the exact opportunity we have together. That we show off who God is by the way that we love one another. I think it's a really good thing.
things the way God designed them. We share His image as we love one another. So today, as a, as a way to respond to the message, we need each other. We weren't designed to be alone. In the body of Christ, when we come to Jesus, we weren't, we weren't meant to just live us alone. I gotta, man, I gotta rough it out myself. I, I, I know I need some help, but I'm just gonna pray 10 hours all by myself. I mean, and I think that's good. We've got to seek Jesus and, and work out our salvation with fear and trembling, right? But then, hey, I can call on a brother, I can call on a sister to, to go through. I'm not in it alone. God didn't stop that way. Hey, I've got something awesome that happened this week. Sunday morning, when we come together, I can share that because we're gonna rejoice together that God's, God's doing something together. But when I, I hear the word of God, I'm just like, man, this is really cool. Can I, can I tell you, Richard, what God spoke to me this week? This is really encouraging. And then it encourages my brother, too, so we're both strengthened. And we're in this together. So tonight, and today, I want to I want to close in this manner. Um, we haven't done this in a while, but I want to break down in small groups to end. And I would like us to pray for each other. Share with each other, hey, this is, this is the need that I have. This is what's going on in my life. Because when we begin in this room to care for each other's needs, then when we think about the needs of others around us, we're gonna, it's going to be a natural outflow of what we've already done together. <coughs> when we learn to, and it's, it's really easy to love Richard. And so when I get, when I get good at loving Richard, then that flow in my relationship and how, I, how we have a relationship, then it's easy to, to flow that same love that we have, practice the same thing with those who are around me. Because I'm, I'm practicing that in with somebody that's really easy to love. Then the one that's something more difficult, then I may ask Richard, Richard, could you help me? Because I need some extra love. But then we, we're doing it together. It's an outflow of our lives is love. Yeah. So this morning, let's practice that. Care for one another. Love one another. And one way we can do that is for, by praying for one another. I think that's, that's the ultimate way of concern. When I know somebody, <coughs> there's certain things that I can do myself. And maybe God will lead me to answer their need myself. But then others, I know, hey. I don't know how to do, but I know there's one that does know what to do, and, and that's how I'm going to do it. Let's do that. Let's break down in, in um, <coughs> groups of three to five. Those are kind of natural three to five groups. Um, and share, hey, this is what's going on. This is how I, you can pray with me. And that's, um, and then after that, pray for one another. And maybe if there's one person in the in your group that feels uh, comfortable, they can be the one that prays for the whole group. Or if, if you all feel comfortable, you're like, yeah, we can all pray, then you can each take a turn and pray for the person on your right. So, uh, let's take a moment and, and break in, in groups of three to five, and then uh, share with what